Um, hello, this is an update on my 16-bit ALU that I've been working on. Um, it's pretty much essentially finished. I still have to test that this chip, this chip, and this chip are working entirely correctly. I do did have make a mistake wiring up the first one, so I'm pretty sure the B register input, the, the, the B register, I'm pretty sure the inputs for the other three chips are currently back to the front, which is a bit awkward, but I mean, it, it's hard to get it right the first time, you almost never do, well you do sometimes and it's nice when it happens. Um, another thing I've done is, you see here, I gave up on waiting, and here, I gave up on waiting for my resistor packs, which I was ordering from AliExpress, none of them turned up, uh, and these resistors turned up, so I was like, well, I do guess I'll make my own resistor packs arrays, whatever they're called, and so that's what I've done. Um, I've also added in some of these ceramic 104s, which I also got from AliExpress, and tested them with a multimeter, done some destructive testing with voltages, and just tested, they, they seem pretty good, they work quite well. Um, I did have some errant, um, this 74LS273 was paying up, and you can see that the, um, inscriptions on this chip are much more clearer than the ones on this chip, and they did come from the same seller, AliExpress, everything you see here. All of these chips came from AliExpress. Uh, I've only got in fake chips once, and that was like a year and a half ago. And so I generally have sellers which I stick with. I only ever use the same ones because whenever you try a new one, there's always a chance they're gonna send you something fake. Um, yeah. So I had to swap this chip out, and I put a new one in. From a different batch and it works fine but I mean this one this one and this one are all from the same batch which the faulty one came in and they work fine so it stands to reason I might have damaged it because <laughs> it just makes more sense um I am intending on rewiring this board because I just didn't do it very well and I need to make some more resistor arrays, and I had a whole lot of 100 ohm pull-down resistors on the data lines because a lot of these chips leak a small amount of voltage and current even when they're low. It's about 1.6 volts. And the flip side of that is these particular 74LS 273s are quite sensitive to voltage, and they consider about 1.8 volts to be high, which means I can get like errant high bits being set when the bus is on low, just because of the accumulation of the other chips leaking current out onto the bus. And so I've seen some people have like used 10k pull down resistors on their bus or whatever. But I'm using 100 ohms, because 100 ohms, if it's just a leakage current or voltage, does pull it down to about 0.1 volts, which does not set off any chip that's working correctly. And yeah, I can't show it working right now because I've disconnected this and the resistors. So my next thing is I'm going to be reworking this board. And then I will go back to validating the rest of this. Oh, I most partially validated this chip. I did check that my carries were working between the chips. 
Yeah, but I basically put, what is it? I think it is eight into this register, and then one into this register, which, when there's only eight from this, I think is the four lit up. And so then when you put another one into this register, and if these inputs are set to have the ALUs add, then it bumps up to only one light on the fifth bar. So yeah, I'll check that works. Um, something I have decided to do, which I haven't really noticed many other people do on their breadboard computers now, is that every time I have a control line, I am going to be running it through these NAND chips. NAND chips because they're cheap. And I can get um, basically four kind of like buffers out of each NAND chip just by tying one of the inputs to low and having the other one high and that makes, you know, I'm just buffering the control signal. But if it's an inverted one, then all I need to do is short the two lines together. And so then a positive comes in and it becomes a negative and comes out. Um, yeah, so that's it. <laughs> it's like the most messy any of my wiring's ever been. That's pretty dense. So remote. I don't know if I'd do it again. Although I shouldn't be saying that, because this... Um, if I grab my 8-bit computer, which isn't currently functional, you can see here, these three boards, um, where is it? This is an A register, and that's the B register, and this is the adder and subtractor. So these three boards is <laughs> these six. And you can see how dense those wires are. And I thought I was crazy when I made this. Oh. <laughs> That's funny. That's the memory unit. Sorry. <laughs> These. <laughs> yeah, embarrassing. This is the A register. That's the B register. And this is the adder. And I thought this nest of wiring was bad. But the ironic thing is, over here is my memory. I'm going to have to do the specific bits, and it's going to be a bit nuts. So not only is it going to be 16 bits, once I'm done, I think I'm going to have like a mega of RAM. And also the intention is to have separate programming, separate program memory, and, um, god damn. I'm going to have program memory, and then separate, just RAM. So, but they're not, so that the instructions and the variables are not occupying the same space. Which is always good. And something else I just got today. Aha. This crappy high school calculator. Which, come on, oh, no way it's in binary, I'll just change that back to decimal. Something that's really neat about this calculator is if I put 42 in, and then it's just two keys, shift, and then binary, just like that. Whereas you would not believe how hard it is to do this on a Casio calculator. So you have to go through like five or six different steps each time you want to change it. And if it resets, you lose it all. Whereas this one keeps the types. And like, I can literally go this plus that equals that. Which is great. And also hex hexadecimal. Decimal, obviously. Octal and Pentor, which I hadn't actually heard about before. But hey, that's cool. 
but the point is just really easy conversions from binary to decimal and back again which is going to make debugging this a hell of a lot easier now, i know i could like run something up on my laptop and that would allow me to do the translations but i like i like old calculators so yeah um that's all for now